The subject that's on my heart this morning is the subject of singing, S-I-N-G-I-N-G, -I -N -G, singing. I uh, mentioned to Brother David just before service started that I uh, would like for us to sing at least one or two songs that talked about singing. Every song that we sang was about singing. Uh, singing is one of the greatest blessings that we have. Uh, singing is for our good and God's glory. Now, when I talk about singing now, I'm talking about spiritual singing, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And when we're singing those kinds of things, uh, there's a message in every song. Every song that we sang this morning, there were a lot of different messages that we heard about singing. When we're singing, God's made our minds such that we can only concentrate on one thing at a time. And so when you're singing, you can't be thinking about something else. When you're singing, uh, if you're singing praises to God, worshiping God, uh, it takes your mind off of the things that might be troubling your heart, your mind, and soul. Uh, I talked with a man this week that's having a great, great trial in his life, and I told him, I said, let's sing a song together. And he said, I can't sing. That's what everybody says when they're in great trouble. I can't sing. I said, yeah, we're fixing to sing. So we sang, uh, Jesus Loves Me. And when we finished singing, he said, I feel different from singing that song. I encourage everybody here to read and study. We won't be able to scratch the surface about singing. But I hope that God will bless us all to know and understand that singing is important. I was thinking this morning as I got up about singing and I remember picking cotton in the fields of my grandfather and a lot of the people that lived on his farm they would sing while they would be picking cotton. And I love to reflect on those memories of them singing. One of the songs they sang was Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Coming forth to carry me home. But the songs that, that people sing, my grandmother at the kitchen sink, I never remember her washing dishes, that she wasn't singing praises to God. When she was cleaning the house, she was singing praises to God. I pray that God will impress on our minds this morning the importance of singing. And if you want to draw nigh to God, someone else texted me this week and said, my soul needs to be restored. What can I do to restore my soul? I listed four things. One of them was what? Singing. One of them was singing. Singing. Turning your Bibles now to Psalm 100, uh, probably one of the Psalms that most of you know by heart. And it begins by talking about making a joyful noise. Now, I like to hear harmony. I like to hear a cappella singing. I like to hear voices blend together in singing. But there are some people that can't carry a tune. A tune. There's some people that can't sing the right notes. It does not matter to God whether you hit the right notes. Uh, the Word of God just says that we're to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And so every person here uh, if you've got a voice, you have the ability to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And every time that we sing, you ought to be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. But don't just sing when you're in God's house, but I encourage you to sing as you go about your daily activities. Psalm 100, beginning with verse 1. The Word of God says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And by the way, when we're singing, it's to the Lord. We're, we're praising God. We're worshiping God. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. There are three different times in the Bible that the Bible specifically says, make a joyful noise. And then in verse 2, he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. There ought to be a lot of joy. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And then he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. 
If the people of God are looking at the blessings that God has given to us, we're going to be joyful and we're going to be making a joyful noise to the Lord. And we're going to be singing. We're going to be glad. We're going to be happy. The only time that I'm ever discouraged or despondent, the only time anybody's ever discouraged or despondent or depressed, is when they are not thinking about the blessings that they have. Every one of us, you need to, you need to make a list of the blessings that you have. You need to write them down. You need to keep them in your pocket. You need to keep a list of some of the things you're thankful for. Because the more you are thanking God for the blessings that you have, the more you're going to be giving praise to God and the happier you're going to be. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that God daily loadeth us with benefits. Every day of my life, every day of your life, God is pouring out more blessings than we can, can ever begin to comprehend. And so since God is blessing us every day, we ought to be giving thanks to God every day. Every good gift, the Bible says in James 1.17, that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. So all the blessings that we have, they all came from God. Your spouse, your children, your family, everything that you have, your job, your ability to work, everything that you have, everything you're able to do that's right and good, it's God that's given you that ability. And you need to be giving thanks every day for the bountiful blessings, the food and the clothing and the shelter. We pray we just prayed already this morning, give us this day our daily bread, the food that we have. We need to be giving thanks for that food. And everything that we have is a gift from God. So he says, sing, sing unto the Lord. Come before his presence with singing. Uh, he names several things in the rest of this psalm that ought to make us glad and rejoice. In verse 3 he says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Have you ever heard somebody talk about someone and say that's a self-made man? That's a lie from the devil. There's no such thing as a self-made man. It is God that hath made us and not we ourselves. And everything that we're able to do, it's God that gave us that ability to do that. Know ye the Lord, he is God, it is God that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You belong to God. Amen. You are not your own. Jesus Christ has bought you body, soul, and spirit. And because he has bought you, you belong to him. You are one of his sheep. We are his sheep. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Then in verse 4 again he goes back to being thankful. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So verses 3, 4, and 5 tell us one of the reasons that we can be rejoicing and making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Singing. Singing and making melody in our hearts. You may sing, some of you no doubt sang all the songs that we sang this morning and didn't think about the words at all. Do you believe that's possible to sing and not even think about the words? We know most of the songs by heart, so we sing a lot of the songs by heart. But the Word of God says that when we're singing, we're supposed to sing with understanding and we're supposed to be thinking about the words that we're saying. Just like at a blessing or mealtime. If you say to your children, say a blessing or say the blessing. And that child just quotes something they've memorized. If they're not thinking about what they're saying, then that's not really praying to God. And it's not really giving thanks. We need to pray that God will help us when we sing to sing with understanding, to think about the words that we sing. It's important that the words we sing are truth from God's holy word. We should never sing a song that doesn't express truth that's in the word of God. Back up in your Bibles to Psalm 47. Just a moment. Psalm 47. 
the word of God here, and then we're going to the, go to the New Testament, but the word of God here makes it very plain that we are to be singing with understanding, singing praises with understanding. Look at Psalm 47, verses 6 and 7. The word of God says in Psalm 47 and verse 6, Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises. When you're singing, I've already mentioned that you get a blessing out of the singing. But brethren, we're supposed to be singing praises to God. We've come into the house of God to worship God. We've come into the house of God to praise God. Great portion of the worship service is singing praises to God. The next verse, verse 7, Psalm 47, 7, says, For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Think about the words that you sing. Think about the words that you pray. Please stop praying mechanical prayers and think about the words. I would rather you pray a seven word prayer that you mean and that comes from your heart than to sing a than to pray a ten minute prayer that's not coming from your heart. Can you think of any particular example in the Word of God where a man prayed just a seven word prayer, but it came from his heart and it resulted in him being justified? Because of those words that he spoke. Do you remember what it was? Yes, you remember the two men that went into the temple to pray. One of them prayed a long prayer. Talked about how great he was. And then the other one would not even lift up his eyes to heaven. But smote upon his breast and said. God be merciful to me a sinner. And brethren, God was pleased with that prayer. The prayers of the people of God. When they're praying in the spirit and praying with understanding, and when they're singing in the Spirit, and singing with understanding, those prayers and those singing are giving glory to God. Turn to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 14, in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. Again, the Word of God is emphasizing the great importance of us knowing what we're singing about. And thinking about what we're singing and thinking about what we're praying. Sing with understanding. Pray with understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let me just stop here and ask you. Do you really believe that sometimes you sing without thinking about what you're singing? Do you think that you sometimes pray without thinking about what you're praying? I would have to admit that there are times in my life that I do both. I want to change that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 15. The Word of God says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding. Did you know you can sing and not be in the Spirit at all? If that's true, then you're not worshiping God because the Bible says they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth, in spirit and with understanding. We have to pray in the spirit and with understanding. We have to sing with the spirit and with understanding. That's the only way we're really worshiping God is if we're feeling the presence of the Spirit of God and we're thinking about worshiping God and we're singing words and praying words that we understand and are thinking about what we're saying. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Have you ever wanted to be filled with the Spirit of God? Have you ever not felt the presence of God and was... Asking God to fill you with his spirit, to fill you with the spirit of God. Brethren, if you've ever felt the spirit of God, you want to feel the spirit of God over and over and over again. And to be filled with the spirit of God leaves no room for anything else carnal or ungodly. 
So we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the Bible tells you the prescription. He tells you step by step what you have to do in order to be filled with the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. The Word of God says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And there's not a period at the end of that verse. He tells you in the next three verses how to be filled with the Spirit. And the first and foremost way for a child of God to be filled with the Spirit of God is in verse 19. He says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. If you want to be filled with the Spirit of God, you're going to have to begin to sing and sing with the Spirit and sing with understanding. And then you can begin to be filled with the Spirit. I mentioned that someone texted me and wanted to know what they could do to restore their soul. Singing will restore your soul. Your soul will be lifted up. God will bless your soul to be lifted up into a sacred nearness with him when you're singing in the spirit and singing with understanding. The word of God says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And one of the most important ways you can draw nigh to God is to begin to sing. I know you can draw nigh to God by reading and studying the Bible. I know that you can draw nigh to God in many other ways. But one of the most important ways that's on my heart this morning for us to draw nigh to God is that we would always be singing. Sometimes you can sing out loud. Sometimes you have to just sing in your heart. But you always ought to be singing and giving glory to God. Just as the Word of God says we ought to pray without ceasing, we ought to sing without ceasing. And if you're going to be filled with the Spirit of God, you're going to have to be singing and making melody in your heart, giving God thanks every day. One of the most unusual times of singing is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Back up in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There's nobody on the face of this earth that would have, to have told the children of Israel. Nobody on the face of the earth would have said, if you want to win this battle, you put a choir in front of the army. You know what I would have thought if the army said, or if the king said, we're going to put the choir in front of the army as we go out to battle? You know what I would have thought? It's time for me to be a, show, a soldier instead of in the choir. Let's let the choir go first. But I don't want to be in the choir if the choir is going to be in the front of the battle. They didn't have weapons. But they had a weapon bigger than any weapons that the army had. And God told that choir to go and sing in front of the army of God. And it was the singing of that choir that brought about the victory for the army of God that was behind them. That army didn't even fight a battle. The choir won the battle because God struck the enemy down when the choir was singing in front of the army. Second Chronicles chapter 20, starting with verse 20. Do you think any man would have ever come up with this idea to sing as they're going into battle? It's completely contrary to human nature. Second Chronicles chapter 20, starting with verse 20. The Word of God says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, pray, and when they began to sing and pray and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, 
and they were smitten. Those three armies that were greater than the army of Israel, those three armies were smitten by God when the army of God was preceded by singers that God appointed. There's power in singing. I believe with all my heart that the time you need to sing the most is when, the, when you don't want to sing. Some of you are going through some difficulties right now. And you need to sing. The only way you're going to make it through what you're doing is to draw nigh to God. You need to be singing. That will help you draw nigh to God. You sing when you're happy. That's one of the expressions that we sang this morning. I sing because I'm happy. We've got a, a lot of reasons to sing when we're happy. But we ought to also sing when we're sad. We ought to make a joyful noise when we've got problems. Paul and Silas were thrown in prison. They were thrown into the innermost prison. Their feet were in stocks. Turn, into, turn to Acts chapter 16. I want you to see what they did after they were beaten and thrown in prison. They did what they should have done. Not necessarily what their flesh wanted to do. But they did what they should have done when they were in prison after they had been beaten. Acts chapter 16 beginning in verse 22. Acts 16 beginning in verse 22. The word of God says, And the multitude rose up together against them. That's against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, now why do you think those two words are at midnight there? Why do you think those two words at midnight? Sometimes we talk about the dark times we have in our lives. Well, these were some dark times. Even if it had been noon, it was a dark time for Paul and Silas. But in addition to it, and to them having all the problems and trouble, it was at midnight. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Did God perform a miracle? What was it that led or preceded this miracle? The people were praying and singing in the midst of their trouble. They were giving glory to God. They were praising the Lord. They were singing in the spirit. They were singing with understanding. And I want you to remember that the scripture says there the jailers heard them. I've heard people singing. This last time I was in the hospital, there was a lady that every morning, every morning, she came in there to empty the trash cans and to mop the floors. And I've got videos of her. I, after the first morning, I got my phone out. And I said, I'm going to video you. And every morning that lady would come in there and she'd start mopping and she was singing. But she was singing so low I couldn't hear her. And I said, please turn up the volume. She said, you want to hear me sing? I said, yes. She turned up the volume. She kept right on mopping. I'll tell you, the only thing that meant the most to me was not her cleaning that room, but singing. And I want you to know she sang in the spirit and sang with understanding. You can look at any one of these videos I've got on my phone of her singing, and you'll know that lady was full of the spirit of God, and she's happy. And she told me that she was about to have a birthday in her Daughters wanted to know, what can we get you for your birthday? She said, you just pray that I feel the grace of God and the love of God. That's all I want. Just pray for me to feel the grace of God and the love of God. I tell you, brethren, people that are filled with the Spirit of God, that's all they want. They've got everything they need when they're full of the Spirit of God. We need to pray, God help me to stop seeking the things of the world and to seek your Holy Spirit. Help me to worship you. Help me to praise you. 
Help me to sing. Help me to draw nigh to you by singing. There's a father and a son in this congregation that many times when that boy was three or four years old, they would be traveling. They would call me up and say, Brother Billy, listen to this. And they would start singing one of those old line songs. It would have 15 or 16 verses to it. I didn't know those songs. But that father and that son singing those songs, they sang in the spirit and sang with understanding. And every time they sang, I was weeping when they were through. Because not only were they drawn close to God by their singing. You remember those jailers heard Paul and Silas singing? And they heard the Spirit of the Lord touching their hearts. And so when people hear you singing, just like that lady was singing, just like that father and son, bless me to hear them singing, when people hear you singing, it'll bring joy to their hearts and bless them to feel the presence of the Lord. One of the worst places to ever be is picking cotton in hot sun. But when there's people out there singing with you, you can feel God even out there in the sun. Go with me in closing to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 14 and 15. A lot of singing goes on in the book of Revelation. There are songs of victory. When uh, God brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea, Moses was leading them. As soon as they got through the Red Sea and the uh, Pharaoh's army was destroyed, that Egyptian army was destroyed, you know, the first thing they did when they got on the other side uh, of the uh, Red Sea after the uh, army had been destroyed, that Egyptian army had been destroyed, you know, the first thing the children of Israel did when they passed through the Red Sea? The Word of God says they sang. They sang the song of Moses. And then you turn to Revelation chapter, I'll just, I'll for the sake of time just read from chapter 15. No, I'm going to read 14 and 15. Chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. The Word of God says, And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Chapter 15, verses 1, through and th 1 2, and 3. And I'll close right here. Chapter 15 says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, Seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses the servant of God. And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Amen. I pray that God will help us to sing. You might not know the song of Moses. It's recorded in Exodus chapter 15. You might not know it. You might not know the song of the Lamb. But you know a lot of songs that give glory to God. And I ask you to pray. Please sing to the honor and glory of God every day of your life. When you get up in the morning, get up and sing. When you go to bed at night, go to bed singing. May God help us all is my prayer for Christ's sake.